Well, good morning. Um, I'm here today, uh, Chris Piper's the name, to introduce you to some moths that I've trapped here at Selborne. Uh, we had the trap out during the dark hours last night with the moon in its, in its last phase. It was a nice and dark and a nice warm evening, which is the best time for trapping moths. Um, and June is a particularly abundant year for moths as well. Um, so what I'm going to do today is just introduce you to um, the moth trap that I used and then show you, with the help of Kimberly, um, some, some moths that we attracted to light last night. Most moths are attracted to light, some are not, and you will never see them in a moth trap. Um, and they come into light and rest on egg boxes inside the moth trap and remain unharmed and I will release them carefully uh, later so that they're not predated. So what I had last night was this moth trap, which is called a Robinson moth trap with twin actinic lights. Um, so it's 60 watts of ultraviolet light, which is particularly appealing to, to many moths. So um, let's, let's begin to show you some of the moths that came and stayed outside the trap, which I've boxed up at four o'clock this morning. So first of all, uh, at this time of year, we had a whole clutch of privet Hawk moths. Um, there are some inside the trap which I may be able to show you um, when, when I take the lid off but there were at least four outside. This is thought to be the largest hawk moth in England um, although there may be other uh, resident uh, moths, larger hawk moths becoming resident soon. The second hawk moth I want to show you is the poplar hawk moth. Um, this one is particularly excitable and wants to fly away so you'll see its wings flapping rigorously to warm up to then um, depart on its way. Uh, again it's been out as a moth in this country for a few weeks now but it was nice to get one in the trap last night. So the third moth we have here is um, is in fact a twig mimic. Um, there are several characteristics of moths, one of which is that they seek ways of actually protecting themselves from predators by uh, one way by mimicry. Uh, this is the buff tip and is a well-known twig mimic. Um, always a favourite amongst children because they can't believe it's a moth when you put it on a twig. A bit of a cliche among mothers but a really interesting moth to see. One of the moths that was outside the trap last night was one of the pug moths. These are notoriously difficult to identify but luckily for me this one is one of the easiest. It's called a V-pug and when it's fresh it's a lovely uh, green colour. One of the more beautiful moths I think at this time of year is the swallow-tailed moth. This has a reverse mimicry so when you get it fresh like the one you're seeing now you see the tails on the moth, similar to the swallow butterflies, um, which uh, are intended to confuse predators by pretending to be eyes. And often when you see these moths flying, um, they have, they're missing these bits because they've actually been nipped at by, by birds and other predators. But last night and the night before, as it happens, there were particularly good examples. And we had half a dozen or more of these moths around the trap this morning at four o'clock. So at this time of year there's the excitement now of taking the uh, egg boxes which can be full of moths outside the trap and finding things like uh, another privet hawk moth and then turning it over to reveal an elephant hawk moth which is one of the prettier hawk moths in this country. Again, a favourite of children. There are a number of uh, interesting geometer moths that come through at this time of year. Um, many of them very similar in some respects, but the one particularly you're looking at now is called a clay triple lines, which is very common in the meadow. 
um, and that's one of several in the trap today. The ermin moths are particularly interesting moths and the one most common at this time of year is the buff ermine, um, quite unimaginatively named I suppose because of the buff colour and the um, ermine furry type head on it. So we young returned another egg box and yet another privet hawk moth. So that makes seven uh, attracted to the light last night. This one is particularly large, is probably female. So the moths you're looking at now are called coronet um, because of a crown form in the complex patterning. Uh, they come in uh, a, a bit of variation. Um, sometimes you get the beautiful um, one with purple and dark olive greens on it. Um, and other times you get just the complex patterning in a more uh, monochrome form. This is again another form of um, con control that moths have against predators to prevent them being identified. Uh, in terms of size. So the dark arches moth is probably the second or third most common moth you'd find flying in Hampshire at this time of year. Not a particularly uh, unusual moth therefore but one with com very complex patterning uh, and are very interesting to observe if you look closely at its uh, wings. So the moth that we're looking at now is a latticed heath. Um, it's one of those that, if there are rules for distinguishing between butterflies and moths, breaks the rules because it often, uh, and more often than not, lands and perches with its wings partly raised, just as you're seeing them now, really. Um, and therefore um, can be difficult to identify in the field but you will see on the undersides of the wings the dark cross bands. Uh, fairly unusual moth to get in a trap in Cerebourne, but otherwise quite common on heathland. So the final moth I have for you is a, a very common moth flying at this time of year, um, which can easily be confused with uh, another moth with which it has an overlapping flight time. I think this is an uncertain, but I can't be sure. And you can tell why they named it that, because uh, very soon there'll be another moth on the wing called a rustic, and distinguishing between the two once they're slightly worn is actually very difficult. And in terms of re recording, they are often aggregated as the records can be unreliable, but I'm as sure as I can be that that's an uncertain. So most people at this time of year will have uh, no difficulty attracting moths. Um, one of the best ways I've found is just to keep your bathroom light on and open the window, but on warm nights where you've got the door open in the lounge, moths can often be attracted to, uh, to the light in the, in the, in the house. However, uh, at other times of year that doesn't tend to occur quite so much but here at uh, Selborne at the Gilbert White Museum um, we have in a normal year done moth trapping once a month from April to October and by doing that you get a, a, to see a whole range of moths which have different flight times according to the time of year so although we've seen lots of different varieties of moths today we will have missed those that were out in spring and are now either pupating or are caterpillars. So if you're interested in following this up, do come along to one of our moth evenings, possibly uh, later this year or early next.
Wow, look at them. So that I can show you, but it's now wanting to fly off and is warming up and has flown off. <laughs> Probably warming up now, and he'll be sorry. <laughs> He's realised that he's free. I would have caught that if it hadn't flown into my face. 